Hi there, everyone. My name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. And I'm just going to jump straight into this one because we are talking about Black Sabbath's Never Say Die, the last album to feature Ozzy Osbourne for like three decades that wasn't a live album. 100% all original material. Released in 1978. A year of some great albums. Great albums. I'll be coming back around to that. Anyways, let's really dig into this one, okay? Um, Black Sabbath produced the album. As always, they always say that Black Sabbath, you know, everybody in the band's co-creator on this. Uh, or co-writers on this, whatnot. I picked this album up because I dug the song Never Say Die. I had never heard any other thing on here, and the only reason I ever heard Never Say Die was due to a video that was released, Black Sabbath, The Aussie Years. Never, um, and then later on, Megadeth covered it, and I really dug the Megadeth cover as well. I thought it was fantastic, and I really, sorry, I was hoping there'd be some details on here, and there isn't, because I know that on certain songs, different people sing different things, and unfortunately, liner notes don't have, okay, so let me get back into this, um, I had never heard of this album. I'd always seen the album cover and went, huh, I'm not sure about this album. I, I knew nothing about it. Not a thing. Uh, and there's one other Ozzy album from that time period that I, I still, to this day, I, I've actually never picked up, and that's Technical Ecstasy. And I know only one song from that album that I've ever heard, and I, I thought that song was cool, but, you know, Ozzy's not on it. I'll come around to that as I get into this album. Now... The song Never Say Die, the title track on this album, clocks in, and they got the times on the back here, which is kind of nice, uh, clocks in at 3 minutes and 47 seconds. I dig this song. Uh, Never Say Die is a boogie-woogie song at heart. You can dance to this song. You can get up. You can have a good time to this song. Uh, I talked about this when I talked about uh, the, uh, the Nativity and Black albums, where I have actually talked about the Megadeth cover of this. And even the Megadeth version, the, they have this great dance vibe to this song, and you can't help but want to swing and dance. I honestly, I love putting this album on when I'm cleaning, and it gets me pumped up right at the beginning because, you know, I'm up there dancing with the mop or the broom or the vacuum or whatever, and I'm having a good time, man, with Never Say Die. It's such a good tune. So much fun. Highly underrated Black Sabbath song. Really does deserve way more commercial play than it gets. Actually, it gets like no commercial play, which really sucks. It really should get some major commercial play. Realistically, it, it's the song they should swap out for some of the standards that they play. Instead of playing Iron Man, switch it out for Never Say Die. Or instead of playing Paranoid, switch it out for Never Say Die. Really, it's 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 good tune. Really, really good tune. After and Black Sabbath as well, you know, if this ever gets back to the guys from Black Sabbath, if you, if you guys are out on tour again, put it back in the set list. Seriously, it's a great song. It should be in the set list. Uh, from there, we go into Johnny Blade. I like Johnny Blade. Johnny Blade is a longer song, clocks in at six minutes and 27 seconds, but it's got a lot of arrangements to it. It's got a lot of textures, a lot of flow, a good story to it. Um... It really has this great kind of vibe and element that it's not for your standard listener, your standard, even your standard Sabbath listener. It's not even necessarily for them. But for people that like songs that have some story to it and have some good music to it, are really, really solid, solid tracks. Johnny Blade is really kind of a cool track. It really has a good pop and stand out to it. That goes into Junior's Eyes, which is 6 minutes and 41 seconds. Um, now, Johnny Blade into Junior's Eyes, and that even flows into A Hard Road as the next track. And those three 
together, you really kind of get this long run. It feels like a long running narrative between them. Johnny Blade totally stands out on its own. Junior's Eyes is a really good song when you're listening to it, but kind of disappears when you talking when I'm out here talking about songs. And A Hard Road also really good solid tune. But when I'm up here thinking about it, I want to talk about it, it's like there's nothing to really kind of punch it and, and kind of say here this stands out for this reason. Because of the way everything flows, you know, like when you're listening to it, they're album tracks. They really are. It's, they're album cuts. Um, now, I don't have the vinyl, but when I look at the track lengths on here, it's kind of, I'm, I'm surmising that the first four tracks make up the first side. And then the next five tracks make up the second side of the album. And these are all, once again, great album tracks. But these are for people that are into music. You know, I, I hate to say it, these are kind of music snob tracks. This is more into that bluesy, jazzy kind of vibe going on. Uh, Shockwave is kind of... Mm, nah. It's kind of, it's cool. There's definitely some cool different vibes to it, but it's not exactly, it's not exactly a song to talk about. Air Dance, on the other hand, unique, pretty, different. Stands out amongst the tracks on this side. Then we get to Over to You. And at this point, you can tell they're really kind of back experimenting with their roots a little bit. That goes into Breakout. Breakout's the shortest thing on this entire album, and that's 2 minutes and 36 seconds. Breakout is also, if I remember correctly, is an instrumental. I believe Air Dance and Breakout are both instrumentals. I can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. Um, I'm positive Breakout is. And then we go and finish the album with Swing and the Chain. And Swing of the Chain, if I remember correctly, I think it is actually Bill Ward on vocals. This album, I didn't mention this in the beginning. This album was the, uh, Ozzy was, after Technical Ecstasy, Ozzy was tossed out of the band. Because Ozzy was faltering already by the time they got to Technical Ecstasy. And by the time that was over, Ozzy was out of the band. They went to go start a whole new album, got ready, started working on a new album, and the album that they started working on is eventually what became Heaven and Hell with Dio. Which I promise I will eventually get around to covering. But, they, um, when they decided to bring Ozzy back and try again, Ozzy came back and said he wanted to do a whole new album with everybody all together at once, working on the album together. He didn't want to use stuff that they recorded or worked on while he wasn't around and then try and add stuff to it. He had no interest in that. So this album was 100% when Ozzy came back and them throwing it together. And it's the music on this album that really is the interesting part of this album. I don't think any other vocalist would have made it better. You know, like when, if you watch my Sabbath, bloody Sabbath review, I talked about how I honestly think that Dio would have made it a better album. This album, I don't think Dio would have made it better. This is one of those albums that's meant to be a hidden gem kind of album. It's not meant for everybody. It's not meant for even every Sabbath listener. Even if you're a hardcore Aussie years Sabbath listener. I mean, if you're that hardcore of an Aussie years, you really should have it. But this is for people that want to hear something different, want to hear something unique. And that's, this really is in the Sabbath mythos. This is a little more of an interesting and unique album with a little more flair on the music side of it and letting the other guys in the band having a little more voice, we'll say, in their own way, even without, you know, talking about vocals and whatnot. If anything on this 
album. No, because I don't want to hear anybody else sing Never Say Die. Ozzy is killer on Never Say Die, the title track Never Say Die. And realistically, honestly, this title track Never Say Die really should be a bigger song than it is. It really should get pushed more than it is. And I think the reason why it never did is because it was 78 and it had more of a dance vibe to it. You could get out there and you could boogie woogie to it. I think it got more associated with disco than it might have wanted to, which may have also hurt that album a little bit because it's not a disco song. It's just a great classic rock and roll song. And when I say classic rock and roll, I'm talking like it's got the vibe like that 50s rock and roll, that that Chuck Berry uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, get up there and dance, rock and roll kind of vibe, you know, swing and get, you know, that swing. It's got that swing to it. And it's really, that is the song that really pushes. And I really would love to see Sabbath do that one again. That really should be added into a Sabbath set list. It should have been added into a Sabbath set list years ago. Fantastic song. Absolutely. Um, so those are my views. Uh, let me know what your views are. That's what the comment section is for. Otherwise, everybody, I do have to say peace, love, take care. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button.